My soil science protege right there, Bronx. Say hi, Bronx. When we see this kit, we often think cheap, inexpensive, and useless. But truth be told, this may be all you need when it comes to gardening, particularly if you're part of the Geek Channel and you know a little bit about garden scientists or science. So today's video, we're gonna go over, and this is a thorough guide. So if you're not here for a long time, then you're probably not gonna enjoy this video. But regardless, we're gonna go over how to choose where to take your sample from, how to actually take a proper sample, all the way to the limitations of this kit, how to read this kit, and then how to act based on what this kit said. So fall is actually one of the best times to test your soil couple reasons for this. Number one, it is a great indicator of how much nutrient or how your actual plants change the chemistry of your soil this summer. And when I say plants, I actually mean the environment as a whole. So whether you were in a drought season, incredibly wet season, whatever the case may be, is gonna show up on that test. The other reason for doing this in fall is actually because when we start talking about pH, the time and space in which you actually wanna adjust is right now because changing your pH takes time. And when I say time, it can take months to up to a year even to see the dial move a little bit. Yeah, dead serious. So right now is actually the best time to do it because you can make the adjustments and then review those adjustments in the spring. Whereas if you make the adjustments in the spring, you gotta wait till next fall before you can correct or change or adjust based on what you chose to do. And by the way, everyone keeps asking about this car. That is my car. This is my summer car that I only drive in the summer. It's my Pont Pontiac Parisienne and her name is Priscilla. Okay, so the limitations of this test actually come down to the soil type you're testing. So anyone that has been influenced into doing no dig, straight compost, non-soil, soilless medium, no fans, which is not the best choice, in my opinion, as I'm someone who has a degree in soil science, I mean, that's completely biased if we're being totally honest, but regardless, soil testing does not work. It doesn't matter if you do it in a laboratory. It doesn't matter if you do it at home it's going to be inaccurate because these are all designed towards using a soil medium, not a soilless medium. And this is particularly true when it comes to organic material and nitrogen content, but we'll get into those two here in a little bit. Okay, so when it comes to the in-ground people, you have a few more rules you need to follow. Okay, number one, uh, is that you wanna look at the topography of the land. Topography is a very fancy word that science uses. And the reason why science uses that is because we need to validate the money we spent on a piece of paper. Regardless, the topography is what you need to look at first. So in particular, hills, topography, and even more specifically, the bottom versus the top of the hill. So there is one kind of YouTuber out there that I've been watching in particular where I'm kind of like, you've got an odd topography. You may want to watch that. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember names. This one here, whoever that may be. Wonderful woman. I really enjoy her. Uh, but anyways, topography, the reason why it factors in is because the top of anything, regardless of how even steep the incline is, the top always, always is gonna be lower in organic material, lower in nitrogen in particular, and a number of other micro, macro nutrients overall. This comes down to leaching. So anything that can be water solubilized and moved downwards via gravity, all the way to planes. Fucking planes. All the way to the middle, being kind of the hybrid between the top and the bottom to the bottom, which is going to be incredibly high, particularly in nitrogen and organic material. And the bottom is actually going to be the most lush, the most dense, the most intense. And that is because again, even wind kind of moves stuff to the bottom, water moves stuff to the bottom, shit runs downhill. I don't know what else to tell you, but the bottom is usually the best the bottom. The bottom is usually the best place to be. Yeah, regardless of the situation. Okay, so if your soil is mostly pillow princess and you've actually like 
put it in a space that's at the bottom of a hill, you probably have very high levels of nutrients. And if you're choosing to put a new garden in, you want to actually aim for that space because it's probably the best hands down for anything. He may end up with higher levels of nitrogen, but that's that's doable. You can fix that. So if you're gonna choose, put it at the bottom of a hill. Now, when it comes to soil sampling, taking from the top, the middle and the bottom separately is going to be very important. Now, the reason why that's gonna be important is because each one is going to have to be treated differently, particularly if we're talking like a large scale like kilometers or meters or feet, regardless of where you are in the world. <laughs> Dr. Ashley in the house. Now, this little device here, oddly enough, is kind of very similar to actually what, what soil scientists use, but this one's on Amazon. So I'm gonna link it down below. And what makes this one so unique is that it goes to the proper depth and it also is wonderful for people who are in a budget because it's really not that expensive and it's made of stainless steel so it's gonna last forever but anyways um this little thing i'm gonna show you how to use it because it actually there's a little bit of a technique that goes down to it so step number one before you sample anything is that you want to remove the organic material off the top of the soil if it's leaves compost manure I don't care what it is. If it's organic and it doesn't come from the earth and it wasn't a glacier that's been Small minds are amused by small things. What can I say? If it hasn't been pulverized by a glacier and isn't mineral, it needs to be removed from the surface of the soil. What happens below said soil surface actually doesn't matter so much. It is going to factor into the, the value of your soil or the values that your soil gives. Uh, Anyways, this technique can be used whether you're sending it to a lab or you're doing it at home. And the key here is actually to get down to a foot. Now this, do I know the length or the size or anything? No, but what I can tell you is it is pretty identical to what actual soil scientists use uh, or agronomists use or anyone that's working in agriculture uses, but like a handheld version of it. Uh, we're lazy in the science world. We kind of just actually use like a stand-up version of it or one that's actually mounted on the back of a truck. Regardless, this one will work just fine for you gardeners out there. It's the technique that matters, not the size. So what we want to do is we want to remove the organic material, put it into the actual soil, and then we want to twist and then lift. It can be like a quarter turn twist. It doesn't have to be like a whole 180. A 90 is fine. The idea here is to make sure the soil kind of stays inside of the coring device, and then you're gonna pull it out, and inside of there, you're going to have what we technically call a soil profile, AKA a soil plug, uh, you name it. But what we wanna do is we wanna aim for the soil or testing of the soil or capture of the soil that is kind of in the root zone. So we've removed the soil sample and now we can physically see what it looks like. We can determine the moisture level and that's actually what we care about next. The moisture level is important because the more moist the soil is, the faster we actually need to utilize that soil. Now it can't be sopping wet. We actually have to let it dry out a little bit if that is the case but if it has some moisture you want to dry it down incredibly quickly or you want to test immediately the reason for this is because of the nitrogen factor nitrogen is very volatile meaning it is leached volatilized and just the nitrogen in cycle in general is like ashley on too much caffeine if you will she moves quick and it actually changes the dynamics or the chemistry of the soil incredibly fast. So this is actually the reason why laboratory tests even generally don't offer nitrogen testing unless you can immediately get the sample to them. And if they say they test for nitrogen, I'm not gonna comment on why they would say the test for nitrogen, but it just wouldn't be accurate in my humble opinion. And now we're going to look at the limitations on choosing whether you're gonna do an at home or an actual laboratory test. Now there are several limitations. Number one is microbes. Now microbes is actually limited by both the laboratory tests and at home tests, but we'll talk about how to actually test for microbes a little bit later at home without a lab. But there are four other ones outside of 
the actual microbe activity. There are four that an at-home test, like an actual kit, like the Rappi test kit, can't show you. And they're important still, regardless of this. And they are usually found in laboratory tests. Now, number one is calcium, second is magnesium, and the third one is iron. Now in December, I'm going to do the 17 days of essential nutrients as a countdown to Christmas. And we'll talk about those three and why they're important. But regardless, the at-home test does not test for them. Calcium can be tested at home, but it's not via that kit or any kit that I've seen. If you want to know how to do that, please let me know in the comments down below and I will be more than happy to show you. It's very, very easy. Now, the next one that a lab versus an at-home test kit won't show you is actually the organic material. Now, again, this is actually another one you can test at home very easily. So if you want a video on that, comment down below and I will make a separate video on that because it's not hard to do. Uh, it's relatively accurate when you do it from home. It's good enough for a garden situation. So those are kind of the four that we can test for in an at-home kit. So because you guys are part of the Geek Crew, I'm more than confident that you know how to read instructions. And so I'm not gonna go through kind of the ins and outs of how to actually do the kit. Move big sticks and rocks if they exist. That's kind of common sense. You guys aren't dum-dums because you follow this channel. And then you literally just compare the color on the little window screen to the colors that are on the side of the container. Super easy, I'm not gonna go into that, but the interpretation of the results and how to remedy these, that's what's important. With this test, if it's not a lab test, I would use as a recommendation for what you need to do rather than the Bible. And the best way to kind of get it as like a more of a biblical accurate answer is to do multiple tests on the same area. Uh, which will kind of give you like an average. Most of the time they kind of, they show up the same. The reason why I say this is because the less intense you are about the specificity that you use in regards to the water, uh, choice you use to the soil type you use, to how meticulous you are about following the instructions is actually going to change the results. Not drastically, in my experience, but it can change the results regardless. So if you want kind of like a very accurate answer, you are want to test that space at least three times and then the answer is going to be somewhere in the middle. Again, that's for an at-home test. Now the nitrogen test is, it's one of those things where it's going to be slight, it's not going to be super accurate. It's just the way that it works. Now, even on a lab test, you won't actually, or you shouldn't see a nitrogen bar. What you will see is an organic material bar. And the reason for that is because nitrogen is literally directly related to the organic material found inside of that soil. So if your nitrogen is showing low, the solution is actually the addition of organic material and that is compost manures, you name it. Phosphorus. So this is like the number between the N and the K when there's the three numbers on the fertilizer container. Now, phos generally speaking, is pretty easy to test for. Um, and this one you could probably use pretty religiously in determining what you need to do. And then potassium as well, for whatever reason, these kits call them potash. Okay, I do know why. It's because the actual mineral potash is where the fertilizer potassium comes from, regardless of if it's organic or conventional fertilizers on a commercial scale but i find it weird that they keep on calling it potash it's potassium people know chemistry they are not idiots don't treat them like it now when it comes to nitrogen phosphorus and potassium these results if they are showing under under specifically you want to treat the soil in the spring i personally wouldn't go too invasively right now in the fall. The reason for that is because there's a lot of factors and how those nutrients can actually just be relieved of the system from now until when you go to plant in the spring. pH is the exception. The pH, if this shows up below a six, then you want to intervene with either lime, for those of you that are below the six. pH is one of those things that's going to take time and effort. I'm talking years. Don't go too hard little increments at a time, not a ton. And I'm going to do a video. It's coming out in November on how to change the pH of your soil. Your girl's very busy lately. Um, 
so it's it's coming okay now when it comes to microbes probably one of arguably the most important factors when it comes to soil whether it's conventional farming organic farming or your garden the reason for that is because microbes are responsible for the nitrogen cycle the phosphorus cycle the potassium cycle uh, all the cycles literally of nutrients are responsible or are managed by microbes so this is very important to test for and the test for it literally involves socks and underwear and if you want to learn more on how to do it this video right here you let her stick it in the ground there's a couple little odds and ends you need to do to achieve it and it will tell you how many microbes you have you adjust accordingly based on this video and that is what google says you've been searching so just watch it because they know more than i do like most people i will talk to the geek crew next time bye